Thank you for the answer. I'll tell you later. I hate to call to order uh, the September 4th, 2019 Frederick County Planning Commission. At this time, I'd ask everyone to join us in a moment of silence. Thank you. We have an agenda before us tonight. I'll accept a motion if there's no changes to the agenda to adopt the agenda. Move for approval. Second. I got a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Next item is committee reports. And the first one I have up tonight is transportation. Mr. Oates. Uh, yes, sir. We met on the uh, August 26th and had a few items to uh, go over. The first was a request for a truck restriction on Brucetown Road. Uh, the committee discussed it. Uh, the portion of Brucetown Road was being looked at. It had 26 vehicles a day that uh, was three axles or more. However, you couldn't di differentiate that between, say, farm vehicles or a pickup pulling a trailer. Uh, and it was such a low count that the committee uh, voted against putting a re truck restriction on that road. Uh, there was a request for a speed limit reduction on Armour Road. Uh, the reduction request really didn't go through. However, there's a hairpin turn in that road, and VDOT said they would look at that, possibly without putting in a uh, three-way stop sign to try to slow people down. Well, actually, not to slow people down, but to uh, improve safety, and as a result, would slow people down. Uh, the next item is... Uh, we discussed our transportation form, and that's up on the board tonight. We'll be meeting in here on October 28th at 6 p.m. And it's open to the public to come and discuss transportation issues in the county. And other than that, it was just uh, some updates. Thanks, sir. All right. Thank you. Mr. Unger, do we have a Frederick Water? Yes, sir. We met August the 20th, and the first thing on the agenda was... Uh, Schaefer Barbecue Market up at Middletown, which is uh, south of Middletown a little bit. They need to get sewer. The sewer's not working properly up there. They're on a septic system, and what they're doing is wanting to hook into Middletown's sewer system. Well, in order for them to do that, they got to cross the Route 11 and go back down toward Middletown, which is, is in Frederick County for a ways. So they had to go through the sanitation department to get that worked out. But anyway, what's going to happen is they are going to let them hook the sewer up to Middletown. And then I guess Middletown will build, a san build us a sanitation department. And then we'll, in return, build uh, Schaefer's for the sewer down there. So that's going to work out good for them. They're going to at least get their sewer system resolved. <coughs> Uh, the other thing we talked about was uh, board directors request the Frederick County Board of Supervisors revise Frederick Waters articles incorporation to enable the ownership of sewer treatment facilities. Currently, the sewer treatment facilities, and probably people don't know this, are owned by Frederick Winchester Services. And uh, what we're going to try to do is if we build any more sewer systems is just have Frederick Waters own it and not Winchester be involved in that and hopefully that'll fly so we're looking for approval for that from the board of supervisors if they'll do it uh, some of the projects coming up is the ball fields down to stonewall industrial park the new facility we have down there uh, that will we have five ball fields down there and that should be in play i think next year the other thing is construction of 37 water main that's coming down along 37, which I'm sure people have seen, should be in operation this fall, and that will loop the water from the north to the south, connecting that so they won't have problems with water in case one of the other north or south quarries fail. Uh, the construction of the Frederick water tank on, five, on 277 should be in operation this fall. I don't know if anybody's seen that, but they're getting along very well with that. And uh, the last project they're working on is the Peckin Water System Plant. Uh, they've got the construction going out to bid this fall. It's an eight million, eight million gallon per day water treatment plant that should be in operation in 2021. Uh, our customer base, and this is hard for me to believe, it's over 16,409 right now, connections, which has really grown in the last couple of years. <coughs> 
I know some of y'all keep tabs on that, and that's going up a good bit. Uh, monthly water production average is 6.9 million gallons per day. That's as much as I've ever seen it. It's close to 7 million gallons a day now, which is getting up there. Uh, Stephen City Deal Treatment Plant North and South Quarries are continuing to stay recharged very well. They're still pretty full. I mean, there's no sign of them falling off hardly at all. And uh, we're getting 3.3 million gallons per day out of the one in Stephen City, and we're getting around 2 million gallons for the North Quarry at Clearbrook. And we're buying 13 point, almost four gallon, four million gallon per day from <coughs> Winchester, which is still down for the amount of water we're using. So we're in pretty good shape. I do not have a, a rainfall for this month, but it sticks in my mind it was 5.2 or three for last month. So that's still real good. That's it. Quite the report, Mr. Unger, thank you. Uh, Mr. Moon. Top plan. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The uh, committee did meet on August the 12th uh, to continue discussion of the Woodside Business Park Comprehensive Plan Amendment request. Uh, ultimately, uh, after discussion amongst the committee and with the, uh, the applicant, uh, the committee did recommend that uh, to staff or to forward a recommendation that uh, prior to this particular request moving forward for a specific consideration that there be a uh, broader analysis of uh, the Northeast land use plan area with a specific focus on uh, infrastructure requirements for the planned land uses that are there uh, or that are, are planned today and, and what we anticipate moving forward. Uh, so that's the recommendation going forward from the committee and uh, there will be a, a joint work session with the board uh, scheduled sometime in the in the foreseeable future, I think, to uh, to have discussion between the board and commission on that request. Thanks, sir. Appreciate that. And back to Mr. Oates. Are we done with you? No, Mr. Unger, DRC. Excuse me. Kevin, what we're going to be talking about tonight is what I have to report on, so I'm going to let it just play out that way, and it's going to be the exact same thing. Quite all right. I'll go back to the other end so we don't get whiplash. Mr. Ray is from our Winchester Planning Commission liaison. Okay, Mr. Chairman, we met, the Winchester Planning Commission met uh, September 3rd. Uh, we are currently working on our editing the Winchester's comprehensive plan following four planning and uh, public input sessions in July and August. Uh, our latest zoning request uh, is centered around rezoning land north of the Timbrook Safety Building and the traffic circle there to uh, account for green space requirements on the development at Cork and uh, Piccadilly and Kent Streets. And that's the extent of our work. Thanks, sir. Nice to have you with us. Glad to and be last but not least, Ms. Trout from the Board of Supervisors. Good Thanks. evening. Board of Supervisors met on Wednesday, August the 14th at 7 p.m. And I'm scrolling through my agenda here. So we approved two outdoor festival permits, um, one for a film festival and one for the Rotary Club. We also um, approved the relocation of the boundary line between Frederick County and Warren County to be sent to Warren County. We approved conditional use permit 04-19 for Jonathan DeHaven um, for a new building construction for an auto repair shop and denied the motion for conditional use permit for 05-18 for Waveland Farm LLC, a special event facility. And we also approved the request for a Swaza exception for Orchard View Elementary School and for another request for a Swaza ex exception for West Oaks, Oaks Market was also approved. And that is it. All right, thank you, ma'am. If there's no other, I don't believe I got any more committee reports. We'll move on to the next portion with citizen comments. Uh, this is anyone could come forward to speak to us tonight for any item that's not on our agenda. And seeing no one, we'll close the citizen comments portion. We'll move right into our next item. It's an information discussion item for public utilities, including utility scale solar power generating facilities. Mr. Klein. Sir, 
the sorry, Mr. Chairman, I was at the back of the presentation there. Um, this is an ordinance amendment discussion for public utilities. And again, this is a proposed amendment to Chapter 165, the zoning ordinance, to provide a definition for public utilities that includes utility scale, solar power, energy generating facilities, and providing additional supplemental use regulations for specific uses that requires utility scale solar generating energy facilities to make arrangements including financial security for decommissioning which is consistent with and as required by the Code of Virginia which was amended earlier this year and to require site plan review and approval only for utility scale solar power generating facilities. We provided a definition for public utilities where one previously did not exist in the zoning ordinance. Uh, specifically, we define public utilities as power generating facilities, booster or relay stations, transformer substations, transmission lines and towers, pipes, meters, and other facilities, including utility scale solar power generating facilities, and sewer and water treatment facilities, including sewer and water transmission lines. Such facilities may be owned by a public utility, public agencies, or other operators with a certificate of public convenience. The intent of this text amendment is to codify a determination that utility scale solar power generating facilities would otherwise be considered a public utility in the uh, zoning ordinance and to codify those recent changes to the Code of Virginia to include decommissioning requirements for solar energy facilities. This text amendment also cleans up terminology throughout the zoning ordinance as it relates to public utilities. And the text amendment does not amend requirements for other types of facilities, other types of public utilities, including those facilities that may be owned or operated by Frederick Water. That's a very important distinction. We did not amend anything that affects current or future utilities outside of utility scale solar. The Development Review and Regulations Committee devoted a great deal of the summer uh, to discussing and, and working through this text amendment. They met on June 27th, July 25th, and August the 22nd regular meetings. The Development Review and Regulations Committee was generally supportive of the proposed changes and recommended that it go forward to the Planning Commission. This item is presented to you all this evening as a discussion item, no action is required, and staff is seeking any comments from the Planning Commission on this zoning ordinance text amendment that may be forwarded to the Board of Supervisors. Staff is happy to uh, answer any questions if there are any, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Klein. Any questions of Mr. Klein? Mm. Seeing no one, we're good. Okay, folks, it's an information discussion item. In my DRC committee, people want to discuss, kick off, <coughs> reiterate? I think we covered it pretty well, I think. Okay. Uh, I would recommend sending this to the board if that's the next step with it. Well, it's our general consensus is pretty much if we don't have anything that we want to change, and it looks <coughs> we have it here, and I'm not seeing that we do, so I think you got a favorable to move it on to the board as it is, and we'll go to our next item. Our next item is uh, conditional uses in the RA, rural areas district. Mr. Klein, you're still up. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is our second ordinance amendment for discussion this evening, and this is uh, regarding <coughs> conditional uses in our RA, rural areas zoning district. The purpose of this text amendment is to add clarity to specific uses where the intensity of a given use is important in considering its appropriateness for a conditional use permit or CUP and to provide consistency in the allowance and implementation of certain uses in the RA zoning district. The Board of Supervisors directed the Planning Commission to evaluate the conditional use permit process and those uses that were listed as conditional uses to ensure that they are of a scale and are appropriate for the zoning district in which they are allowed. This is a proposed amendment to Chapter 165, the zoning <coughs> ordinance, to further define the conditional use country general store, specifically to exclude all fuel sales and cap the square footage allowed for country general stores at 3,500 square feet. It also provides additional regulations for specific uses uh, with an emphasis on the country general store and it eliminates, combines, and refines uh, the conditional use list, and it also codifies zoning uh, determinations relating to specific uses. 
for our uh, purposes, a country general store is defined with the uh, changes um, underlined and bolded that a re it is a retail business without accessory fuel sales, not to exceed 3,500 square feet in gross retail floor area, allowed where specified in the rural zoning districts, which sells groceries along with a variety of other retail goods. The Development Review and Regulations Committee discussed this item at their August 22nd regular meeting, and the DRRC generally supported the proposed changes. They further suggested um, that they would, they would like to be directed by the Board of Supervisors to consider evaluation of the special event facility use, um, but again, that was not part of this directive and was not part of their proposed amendments. <coughs> this item is presented for discussion this evening. Again, no action is required and staff is seeking comments from the Planning Commission on the text amendment to forward to the Board of Supervisors. And I'm happy to answer any questions uh, the Planning Commission may have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Klein. Any questions regarding country <coughs> general stores? Uh, the one, I, uh, the term country general store and the definition we use, do we base that on anyone else's locality or is that pretty much what we've settled on as Frederick the, County. The definition that was amended was our definition. It's been a definition that's been in the zoning ordinance for a number of years. Um, in deciding the square footage cap, we ran um, an evaluation that was included in your packet where we looked at the dollar general, dollar store kind of retail within the sewer and water service area, finding that those had an average square footage of about 10,000 square feet. And then we looked at the kind of convenience, good stores that were in the RA zoning district that were either approved prior to the conditional use requirement or were approved through a conditional use and we found that they had an average square footage of about 3,500 square feet. So that's where we got that aspect of the, um, the, the definition. And then excluding the fuel sales, that's been a concern raised in a number of these country general stores. Um, in the text amendment, we also included an editor's note that retail establishments that exceed that square footage threshold that may also have a fueling component like a sheets or another um, retail or another chain um, could seek a rezoning on a piece of property that was deemed appropriate to get that type of use. Um, so that's how we're, we're providing that allowance. All right, thank you. Anyone else? I have one question. Mr. Oates. On the editor's note uh, where it says exceed in excess of 3,500 square feet, <coughs> um, shall be located within or adjacent to a designated rural community center as defined in a comprehensive plan and or require a rezoning application. Just so I'm clear, does that mean if you go over 3,500 square feet, it doesn't matter where you're at, you have to rezone? That would be, that would be correct, yes, sir. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Oates? Nope. Contemplating? Uh, and, uh, and under F, we any expansion of an approved country general store would require a new conditional use permit. All right. Okay. All right. Anyone else? We're good, I believe. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Both of those items will go to the board supervisors at their September 25th meeting. Thank you. That brings us to their other, the all important other part of our. We have a meeting for the second part of this month. Mr. Chairman, we have no items for the uh, next meeting in September at this time. However, before we cancel the meeting, as Mr. Moen pointed out, the request for a work session with the Board of Supervisors is going to the Board and their agenda next week. Um, depending upon when the Board might want to do that, we would keep that date as an available option. Okay. Uh, the request right now is to have it in conjunction and prior to the Board meeting on September the 25th. Uh, but we won't cancel the meeting just yet, so we'll just uh, give that as a choice if indeed the board thinks that's a good idea. We'll keep that date open on our calendars. <coughs> There's nothing else to come before us. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. 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 Is that a second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned.